Let's receive right now our daily bread from our Heavenly Father. Father, in Jesus' name, we believe we receive the living manna from heaven, our daily bread. Thank you, Father, that right now you put your thoughts into my mind, your words into my mouth, that I speak as the oracles of the living God, and that this anointed word goes forth in power and in demonstration of the Holy Spirit. And let's acknowledge the Lordship of Jesus. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is Lord over my family. Jesus is Lord in my family. Jesus is Lord over and in my nation. And Jesus is Lord over the nations of the earth. He is pouring out his spirit upon all flesh and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God right now in Jesus' name as he opens people's eyes and they're turned from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to the power of God that they might receive inheritance and forgiveness of sins. And now let's acknowledge our reception of the word. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you that you opened my ears to hear as the learned that blessed are my ears for they hear and my eyes for they see and the eyes of my understanding are enlightened that I may know and understand and perceive what is the hope of your calling. Thank you, Father, that this, this word has free course in my heart and that it accomplishes in me and for me what it is sent to do in Jesus name. It is the incorruptible, imperishable seed of the word of God that lives and abides forever. Well, the parable of the sower, and that is about sowing the word into our hearts. Our heart is designed by God to hear and receive and produce the crop of the word of God and this is the way the kingdom operates in Mark chapter 4. And then this parable is also found in Luke chapter um, 8 and also in Matthew chapter 13. And so it's the same parable, but each one gives us a little bit different insight into different parts of it. So he said that this is the mystery of the kingdom of God. And he is giving us the analogy of a farmer, a regular farmer, planting seed in ground, in wayside soil, in stony ground, in uh, ground that has thorns in it, and then on the good soil. And then he explains it, saying that this, what he's talking about, is the sower sowing the word. And so we're now on the good soil of our heart. And so the farmer, a regular farmer now, he chooses the ground that he's going to sow into. And, you know, he can decide how big of a farm he wants to have. He can be a small time farmer with just two or three, four acres, or he can be a large farmer with maybe a hundred acres. The choice is his. And then what does he do? He prepares the soil. He gets the stones out. He gets the thorns out, the weeds out. And then the next thing he does is what? He decides what harvest he wants. Before he ever goes to get the seed, he decides this is what I want to grow. So then, after he decides what his harvest is, then he goes and purchases the seed. Well, in like manner, God has purchased, Jesus purchased our heart. We're bought with a price by the blood of Jesus. And God is the husbandman, and we are his garden. And he allows us the choice as to what we want to harvest 
and therefore provides the seed whereby we can plant the seed in our heart. But like the Lord mentioned to us yesterday, you can have a bag of seed. You can have really good seed. And this is your seed. Every promise in the book is a seed that is designed to give you what he promised you. It has its DNA. The seed is in itself and it produces after its own kind. So your Bible is your bag of seed, so to speak. And, but a farmer can have the ground, he can have prepared the soil, and he can have the seed. But you know the next step is, if he's going to have a harvest, he's got to plant the seed. If he doesn't plant corn, he's not going to reap corn. If he doesn't plant watermelons, he's not going to reap watermelons. If he doesn't plant cotton, he's not going to reap cotton. So even though he has good intentions of having a good harvest, a farmer knows that he's got to plant the seed in order to have a harvest. So now we are looking at this part of the process of us planting the seed in our heart. We've gone to the Word. We found the promises for any area in your life. I'm saying that if you desire prosperity, then you go to the Word to find prosperity promises. If you want to be debt-free, you go to the Word to find debt-free. If you want to live a long life, go to the Word and find long life scriptures, uh, promises. So that is your seed. But now, we plant that in our heart. So listen to this. In Mark chapter 4, verse 26, and this is another part of the parable. He said, So is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground, and should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up. He knows not how. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear, but when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he put it in the sickle because the harvest is come. And so let's go back through that. So is the kingdom of God as if a man, well, you are a man to cast the seed into your ground. I am a person to cast the seed into my ground. But let's read it this way. Um, putting in the words of um, the word and the heart. So is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast the seed of the word into the ground of his heart. Let's do that again. So is the kingdom of God as if a man, a person, should cast the seed of the word into the ground of his heart and should sleep and rise night and day. I like that. Night and day. He doesn't say nights and days, but he did say night and day. And listen to this. The seed should spring and grow up. He knows not how. So you don't know how this is going to work. You can't explain how planting a corn seed into the ground, exactly what happens. But you just know that it's going to spring and grow up. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself. So you don't have anything to do with the seed actually growing. The earth, your heart, brings forth fruit of herself. And in 1 Corinthians, he says that God is the one that makes the seed to grow. 
So you can believe that, that God is making the seed of the word grow in your heart. That's what he desires to do. That's what this is designed to do for you. And then he says, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth in the sickle, because the harvest is come. So he's saying that this is a process. But you know, it's a supernatural, incorruptible, imperishable seed of the Word of God. And so it doesn't have, it doesn't have to take long for it to work. It really depends on the person as to how intent uh, the person is on planting and watering and reaping. So he cast the seed into the ground. So what is he telling us? It's up to you and me to cast the word into our heart. But how are we going to do that? I'm a how-to person. You know, a farmer has to find out for himself from somebody else that knows how to plant seed. Nowadays, you can just Google things. But um, I guess three or four years ago, I had a friend of mine came and she said, I'm going to help you plant some plants. Well, I didn't have a clue as to how to do it. And so she taught me how, how to do that. Well, the Holy Spirit is teaching us. He's not just telling us do it. He's teaching us how it is to be done. So let's go to Mark 4.20. And these are they which are sown on good ground. So now the word, we're sowing the word on good ground of your heart, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some 30-fold, some 60, and some 100. So what is he saying? Hear the word and receive it. Say, hear the word and receive it. So it's not just a matter of like going to church and your mind being off somewhere else and the preacher be preaching. Saints, I know I shared this with you a couple of days ago, but you don't go to church out of uh, obligation, out of just because you're supposed to, you go to church to hear the word, to allow that word to grow up in you, and to worship God. So it's a very purposeful thing. In Matthew 13, 23, But he that receives seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word, and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. And then Luke eight fifteen, but that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it, that's another key right there, keep it, guard it, and bring forth fruit with patience. You know, maybe when you were in grammar school, I know around fourth grade, I think most of the uh, schools did this at one time. They would give you a little cup and some soil and a bean for you to plant in there to show you the process. And you would water it and they would say, now don't mess with it. Well, Frank told how when they gave him one, he said, I just couldn't keep my fingers out of the soil and I just kept messing with it. And he said, mine did not grow. So this is a key is that when you plant the seed in your, of the word in your heart, you just believe that it is growing and doing what it's supposed to do. And this is getting a little ahead of ourselves, so we'll, I'll probably say this again later on. But you have to say, 
the seed of the word is growing and producing a hundredfold. You don't say, you know, this is just not working for me. Because right then, you are totally nullifying the seed that you have planted in your heart. Any negative words will nullify the good seed that you have sown. A farmer believes that the earth is bringing forth the, the seed, is making the seed to grow. So we have to do the same thing. In Proverbs 4, verse 20, and this is uh, the same, it's, it's giving us instructions on hearing and receiving the word. My son, attend to my words. Give your undivided attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings, and that's your spiritual ear. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life unto those that find them and health to all of their flesh. And then he says, Keep, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of your heart flow the forces of life. Put away from you a forward mouth, and perverse lips put far from you. Let your eyes look right on, let your eyelids look straight before you. Ponder the path of your feet, and let all of your ways be established. My son, attend. Give your undivided attention to my words, to the word seed. Incline your ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of, their, of your heart. For these words are life unto those that find them and health to all of their flesh. Only after a person has given their attention to the word, inclined their ear, listened to what the word says, and let them not depart from their eyes. Because that's the way you plant the seed in your heart. Then, what is the harvest? The harvest is life unto those that find it. And this is the life of Jesus, the abundant life the supernatural life, because it's supernatural seed, life unto those that find it, and health or medicine to all of their flesh. So, in Deuteronomy 30, verse 11, so, let's go back real quick to Mark 4. These are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it. Okay, now let's go to Deuteronomy 30, verse 11. For this commandment which I command you this day, it is not hidden from you, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that you should say, Who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it? Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it? But the word is very nigh unto you in your mouth and in your heart that you may do it. Notice he said in your mouth and in your heart. Now the Holy Spirit revealed to us through the Apostle Paul how this applies to us as a believer, as a Christian, as uh, one who is planting the seed of the word. In Romans chapter 10, verse 6, But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh, speaketh. Very important key. On this wise, say not in your heart, who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, 
or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? So he is quoting Deuteronomy 30. But what saith it, he said. What does the word say? The word is nigh unto you, even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith, the word of faith. So praise God for preachers that are teaching faith, the word of faith, which we preach. What, do, what does he preach? The word of faith. Why? So people can hear, so they can believe, so they can receive that if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And, that, and that's saved, healed, delivered, rescued, made whole. That's what that word means. And it has to do with all of the promises. So this applies to all of the promises. What saith it? The word is nigh you even in your mouth and in your heart. Then he says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto your salvation, unto your promises, unto your deliverance. So this is the number one way for you to plant the seed of the word into your heart is to simply speak that word Speak that promise. Like Mary said, be it unto me according to thy word. But you take the very promise of God and speak that promise. In Psalms 1, David said this, Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the word of God. And in his word does he meditate day and night. And then he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So he said, in his word will he meditate day and night. And that word meditate, uh, one word for it means to mutter it, to mutter it. And so let's go back to Romans 10. What saith it? The word is nigh you in your mouth and in your heart. So you are the sower of your heart. You are the sower of the seed into your heart. Now this is the number one way, is for you to be the one that plants the seed of the word into your heart and sleep right and rise night and day. And how do you do it? You do it by speaking that truth. For instance, uh, 1 Peter 2, 24, by his stripes I was healed, by his stripes I was healed, by his stripes I was healed. I've used that scripture many, many times for myself. And um, I remember one time I had, um, years ago, Satan had attacked my body with the flu. And um, I just kept speaking this over and over and over again. And that word grew up quickly and produced healing. Another time, I had, Frank had taken a skiing to a small ski place in Alabama. And um, my fear of running into a telephone pole to the right took me there. And I ran into the telephone pole. I skied into the telephone pole. And... I cracked my shin and it was very, very painful. And I just told the Lord when I got home, I said, Lord, I desire to receive my healing. I don't even want to go get it checked out. I, I, I believe I received my healing. And so I just within my heart, I chose to do that. And so I just started saying, by his stripes I'm healed, by his stripes I'm healed. And then acting on my faith to the best I could of, of walking on it. 
but I just kept speaking by his stripes I'm healed by stripes I'm healed by stripes I'm healed by stripes I'm healed by stripes I'm healed and it wasn't long at all that all of a sudden it was like a force came up out of me and without even thinking I popped my foot on the on the floor and said by his stripes I'm healed and it was instantly healed and that was from sowing that word into my heart so that is the number one way to do it and then he says in Romans 10 17 so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God because when you're speaking it you're also hearing it when you're speaking it out loud you can't just think a thought you've got to put that word in your mouth and speak it speak the truth in your heart I believe is what King David said the other way is you may allow someone else to read healing scriptures to you or you may listen to a minister there are some great teachers of healing and of faith keith moore is one kenneth hagan is one uh, kenneth copeland and um they will teach you how or just teach you the word on healing, what the word says. Kenneth Hagin actually has a, you can go to YouTube and just type in scriptures on healing by Kenneth Hagin and listen to those, but don't let your mind wander, but listen to that anointed word of the healing scriptures and, um, or listen to a sermon. You can type in, go to YouTube and type in, say, um, Keith Moore healing and listen to that or other ministers that you know preach healing without compromise it is according to the word of god god's will for you and me to be healed and walk in divine health all the days of our long life on this earth and that we live a long life a long prosperous enjoyable life full of victory every day full of abundance every day that is the will of god for us so you can go to uh, one of those teachers and listen to them actually we have i have a dear friend at the church that has been with us for years and years miss thelma jean and she said that um she had a problem with her back that was so painful and she went to the doctor to a neurosurgeon or a neurologist well i think it was a neurosurgeon and he told her he said there's nothing we can do for you and she said she went home and she listened to brother hagan on healing she listened to keith moore on healing she planted that word in her heart and then Pastor Mark of Life of Faith, uh, that's another great place for you to go to, to, to live stream or to his videos. I guess you can do it on YouTube. And uh, he was having Imagination Week, and she listened to that. And with that word that was sown in her heart and listening to him minister, she was instantly healed totally pain-free she's in her 80s totally pain-free and she just moves about and this this happened just recently so you may allow someone else to sow the Word of God into the soil of your heart or you may plant like in 1st Corinthians 3 verse 6 Paul said this I have planted Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So he knows that the Word of God is what he's planting in the hearts and minds of people. So we'll um, pick up on this tomorrow. Remember all day, Jesus is Lord. This is the process of the kingdom. So start planting your seed today. 
just mutter it over and over and over again. And that seed will grow up and produce a crop in you. In Jesus' name.